Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, the Jabbery Magpie, bringing you a spot more Shadowrun Dragonfall. Willkommen aus Berlin once again. So let's have a wander around. We've got our objective there to go talk to the owner of his cafe, a Turkish man named Aldut. But uh, let's walk around. Moritza Platz. What do we have here? It's a lady elephant. Dancing away next to her bicycle. Dancer's bag. Well, throw a five new yen. Woo! Uban Moritz Platz. Let me see what else we have. That must be the symbol of the Berlin Free State. I think the crest of Berlin has something to do with Bear, though I'm not sure about the AK-47. That it's currently clutching. What else do we have? We have the tech vendor. Down there we have algae. Donations for a soup ki kitchen have slowed, Samuel. I'm not surprised. Algae often comes with an expiration date. Uh, let's have a conversation with this man, Samuel Beckenbauer. At the sound of your approach, the orc turns to face you. He wears a severe expression, but there is kindness to his eyes. Guten Tag, Elf. Can I help you with something? Couldn't help you with hearing your conversation. I take you run charity of some sort. He nods. Yes, it isn't much, but we do what we can. Such as? Give me the specifics. He clears his throat, then begins to count off his fingers. In the past several years, I have established a shelter where the dispossessed can sleep, a soup kitchen to feed the hungry, and a library for the people of Quint's Bazaar to better themselves. It isn't much, I admit, but it's a start. A good start, Samuel. You mustn't be so hard on yourself. There are limits to what one man, even a determined man, can accomplish. This is true. He nods to the Orca's side. Thankfully, some of the residents that I've helped over the years come back around to help me. I've got 15 assorted orcs and trolls from all around the Kuritz Bazaar working with me now. They help me man the soup lines, stock the library shelves, and to do all the other 100 things that a community organization does. Needs done every day. These are extraordinary individuals, are living proof that we do here is what we do here has value. They are my inspiration to continue forward. She beams at a compliment. From her body language, it's clear that she idolizes Beckenbauer. Now, do you have any more questions? If not, I will bid you good day. I do not wish to sound self-important or rude, but there are many pressing matters that demand my time. There are 15 assorted orcs and trolls. Does that mean that other races aren't welcome in your organization? That's taking a rather narrow view of it. We do. Of what we do. Yes, it is true that my assistants are all a member of the goblinoid races. It is true that they, before they accepted my help, they were thieves, gangers, and deadbeats. That is not because they were bad people, that is because those of us with goblinoid traits have feared, mistreated, and deemed denied gainful employment by society that hates us. I hire only goblinoids because mainstream human society has created a need for me to hire only goblinoids. The orcs and trolls of the Kreutz Bazaar deserve a workplace where they are treated with dignity and respect. All that being said, our services are available to all. We wouldn't turn away a desperate person. Regardless of that person's metatype, even humans, the most privileged of all races. Now welcome at our door. Isn't that what's most important? It is, I agree with what you're doing here. You're filling a vital need in the community. He nods slightly. Thank you for saying so. Now, is there anything else you need to you would like to talk about? Tell me more. Uh never mind. See ya. Okay, so we have a troll assistance organization. Oh, this man looks like he's selling stuff. Before he stands a troll, though it stretches it, he's standing at all. His great mass is barely held upright by two vintage prosthetic legs, along with a crutch under one arm. His body clicks and harms with every shift of his weight. With his weight, despite these disabilities, his eyes are sharp and calculating. I know you. I haven't been here not long. New to Kreutz Bazaar, then. Heard Monica had some fresh meat in her stable. And Mags, by the way. Good to meet you, Mags. 
The name's Alexi Lane. What's your place in a Croix's Bazaar? No place. Really, just an old relic rusting away. Uh, there's something you should know about Monica. Something happened to her on a run. I'm afraid so. There have already been whispers. I had a feeling, besides, Monica's always on. Why Mr. Boys comes around after a run to check on everybody. She's long overdue, and now here you are in her place. So she's either severely wounded, or outright dead. Which is it? We lost her. For a grizzled troll nods grimly. The servos in his prosthetics complains as he let loose a heavy sign. Now that's a shame. She was a hell of a runner, that one. And a good friend. I'll leave you be. Huh. Wow, this is just... Compared to, uh... The first one with... Fucking Shadowrun Returns. This is huge. Absolutely huge. I'm guessing this is some kind of hub world. And it's not just one, uh... It's Larry like we had before. For Romani Petriarch as an impressive figure, an enormous man in his late sixties, burly and broad-chested despite his age. His voice is deep and resonant, and his breath is heavy with a stench of pipe tobacco. Tavan Bakstani, Elf. You here to conduct some business? If so, I welcome to you, Metbark Arms and Ammunitions. If not, keep right on walking. I was actually hoping for a few answers. You make a purchase, you can ask any my question. Any questions as you like. The corner of his mouth twitches upwards. Make a big enough purchase and who knows, I might even ask a few. Answer a few. So what will it be? Will you buy some guns or will you be on your merry way? I suppose I'm buying. Very good. Ooh hoo hoo, they've got all the stuff here. A taser? Jesus. This is awesome. Oh wow. Sniper rifle. I want sniper rifle. Grenades. Fucking throwing daggers. All sorts of shit. Lots of weapons in this one. They've really gone all out. Who's this man? Zack Flash. This elf has clearly seen better days. His skin is weathered and emaciated as though it has been stretched too tightly over his frame. Track marks line the crooks of his arms and dirty branches wrap his knuckles. Despite all of this, he seems cheerful enough. The elf fixes his twinkling, bugged out eyes on yours and offers you a broad smile displaying his set of all possibly white teeth. When he speaks to you, his voice is, voice is surprisingly deep. Guten Tag, my Freud. You here for some magic? Because Zack Flash... He gestures at himself with a dramatic flourish. Is your magic man? Your street mage? Zack lets out a throaty barking laugh. Street mage? Me? Do I look like a street mage to you? He shakes his head, but his smile doesn't waver. He f fishes a small bag of pills out of his back pocket and dangles them before your eyes. No, Chama, I'm not a street mage. I've got magic in my blood and magic in these bags, but you won't catch all Zack studying any spell books. In that case, let's talk about the magic you've got in the bag there. What have you got? Oh, a little of everything. I've got your Zen, your Hyper, your Nitro, and your Nova Coke. If you want in, I've got it. Zack leans towards you and lowers his voice to a conspiratorial whisper. I've even got a special concoction of my own design, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you're serious about getting high. You want to conduct a little business? Oh, well, what's up with bandages on your hands? Zack snorts out a short burst of laughter. He waggles his bandages in front of you. Oh, V's? Nothing much, Chummer. Nothing much. Tell us about spirit back in Amsterdam. You know, we elves are a very spiritual people. Oh, I can use this as an elf. Oh, come off it. Elves are not on the whole any more or less magical than any of my... Anyone else. And I'm in a position to know. Zack lets out a short, barking laugh. Oh, come on. Stop denying yourself. Embrace the power inside of you. You've got the mojo, just like me. Accept it. Flash lowers his voice to a conspiratorial whisper. Between you and me, my mojo is stronger than any corp war mages. Take those rat scum bastards that ask technology. They cast spells all day and all night, right? Fire this and lightning that. Just toss them around like candy. 
Right. Well, me, I'm doing my thing, not casting spells. I'm storing up my energy and saving it. Can you imagine how much magic I have? I don't think that's how it works, Zack. Trust me, friend, I have secret knowledge. He turns his head from side to side, giving you a good look of his upturned ears. Like I said, it's in the blood. Oh, if we had better biotech skills. Let me see. Biotech. Bugger. Why are we on biotech currently? Uh. Okay, I trust you. Now, can we do some business? Well, I am a businessman, and I suppose you're the customer. Who am I to say no? Show me what you got. So he's a drug dealer. Yeah, this biotech skill looks like a good one to upgrade, because I'm getting quite a few questions which uh, may need it. What does it do? Because I don't think we had it before. Grants bonus to the hit points recovered using med kits. Okay. Oh, that's good. So I can... Enemy HP visible at skill of 2. So we want to at least put 3 hit XP into it. What else do we have going around here? Triage Cyber Clinic. Triage Cyber Clinic. Dr. Xavier. As you approach the elf, you notice that he is in mid conversation, his lips moving rapidly, and his voice comes out in a low, quiet tone with a glossy plastic shell of high grade comlink glints in his wrist. We all listen in. Doing your best not to look interested, you lean in slightly and strain your ears. You can find. You can just make out the end of the doctor's conversation. No, no, that Paris is. I'm quoting you, is more than fair. Well below market value. In fact, if you can't pay it, that's your problem. Yes, I know the price has gone up. This is a seller's market. Well then, you'll just have to find money or go without. I'm sorry. I have to go. I have a patient. He presses a button on his comlink and looks up at you. A million dollars smile on his face. Sorry about the walk, my friend. Welcome to Triage Cyber Clinic. He extends his hand to her. I am Dr. Xavier Skibal. What's your name? Max, a pleasure. Pleased to meet you, Max. What can I do for you today? Let's see cyberware. Ooh, lovely. Let me see. A data jack. So I can swap out and get a hand data jack. That could be fun. Never mind. Nothing for us here. We only have a grand and a quarter so let's not go fucking bonkers. Well, in fact we only got a grand and 200 because I bought a repair, quit, repair kit for my drone. Oh god, more people. Slimmy. Warming self in the dim light of a dying street lamp is a waif of a girl who looks far too worn for early years. The Mother Superior says there will be seven for me to take care of. I need to see them. You're high as a kite, aren't you? We could fly kites. I should ask the Mother Superior. She says I'll be a governess to the children. You notice Chip Jack pointing out beneath the young woman's unruly hair. The vacant look in her eyes marks her as a likely BTL junkie. Lost between the reality and any number of better than life virtual co constructs. I need money to get back to them. That story sounds familiar. I'm sure that's the. Yeah, that's the sound of fucking music. Captain Von Trapp is very well known and respected. The poor dear lost his wife and the children, their mother. A child should not be without a mother, and a mother should not be without a child. Have you seen the captain? Look, do you know Monica? Monica? Is she one of the sisters at the Abbey? No. Wait, Monica. Flick of recognition fights through the haze of young woman's eyes. Yes, Monica. She's good to me. Brings me food to eat and tea to drink. 
I'm afraid I have some bad news. Despite the woman's persistent delirium, she seems to glean meaning from your tone. She died? While working a job, yeah. The girl grips her head in a claw like hands tucking her hair. As if she might pull her brain out for a skull. I don't like this, but I can't switch it off. The girl's frail body shudders, her eyes grow large, and she does not sob. Instead, she smiles a sad smile and has been worn all too often. She will go to heaven. She told me it's a place for good people, stillborn babies, and childhood bets. And she was a good person. The girl begins to mumble to herself while fingering the hair that covers the jack in her head. I'm gonna step away now. Yes, good. I need to rejoin the children. Okay, there's a junkie who thinks she's in the sound of fucking music. What do we have here? Would appear to be justice with a... Okay, let's read it. Bizarre monument tires before you. At top of the pedestal, the form of an angel stands. Its outstretched wings looking over a small park. But the material strange and uneven, given the statue of cold Frankenstein-esque appearance. It appears the artist had wielded this monument together from various scraps of metal and pieces of junk. As you approach, a small grimy monitor at the base of the statue flickers dimly to life. The grainy face of a smug young orc appears on screen. Hello there, I'm Herbert Kunst, creator of this monument. What would you like to know? Press the one key, statue name. This is my tribute to victory, the victory of anarchy. It is both citation and parody of a statue were destroyed some 20 years ago. You may remember it's from the history trids as Sieg Saula, or Goldlesser. Press 2 for installation history. Isn't it obvious? The Sieg Saula, a monument to a hubris of the Prussian state gets blown to bits, so someone takes a lot of bits and builds a monument to the hubris of anarchy. About the artist. I am a visionary who have a consul from the Lundverma. You may know me from. Okay, well there isn't much that I'm known for yet, but I intend to change that. All this art, art is born from misery after all. Okay, I'm pretty sure that the Sieg Sauer is the thing on top of the um, Brandenburg Gate. I'm not definitely not sure, but it does remind me of there is a statue with the lady on the G Brandenburg Gate, and I think she's got a chariot. She's like a winged victory or something. Let's answer the phone. It's an old obsolete phone booth. It's ringing. Pick up the receiver. A monotone, pitch adjusted voice begins speaking almost immediately. The Shockwell Rider contract is for this Keats is no more. Mags is listed up as a follower. As follow-up contact. This is our secured line, Miss Keats. Please listen to the following instructions carefully if you are a supporter of the cause. Continue. We have phone booths in strategic locations throughout the city. Within each one you must find a request posted for specific information. If you can contain obtain a copy of this information, return here and submit it via port below the receiver. We will verify the authenticity of your information remotely and post an undoctored copy of it onto the Matrix ourselves. It is our stated goal for this information to remain free for all. However, you'll be compensated for sought after information returned to this location. Hang up. Okay, so... We give them little tidbits of information and, uh... They give us money. From what I can suss out. I think we've pretty much spoken to everybody. There's the train to Maritza Platz, but... Let's go here. Café Sepsi. Or Setsvi. Who do we have? Oh, Nerps. Delicious. Oh, lovely. I do love some Nerps. Jan Goldschmidt. Hello, my friend. The voice that comes from a man in a chair is as enormous as its owner, teak booming roar dripping with unrestrained mirth. A fine day for a soy calf, yes. Yeah, it certainly is a beaut. From the back of a store, the voice of a shopkeep cuts you off. 
don't mind the fool in the chair. He roars like a traumatized waller, stewing all day in his own sweat. The man behind bar glares at Goldschmidt. His upper lip curls in disgust. I tolerate him only because he takes his soy calf by the bucket. Goldschmidt responds with a raucous belly laugh. Apparently he finds the shopkeeper's insults to be hilarious. Ah, I'll tug mine for wind. You're as quick-witted and sharp-tongued as ever. I bow to you. If you wouldn't mind... Once again, the shopkeeper cuts in. To bow to me, you would first have to vacate your chair. The shopkeeper claps his hands together, clasping them in front of his cheek. I shall summon a team of determined young men and arox to assist with the task. With luck, you will be on your feet by nightfall. Goldschmidt smiles at you, his eyes glittering. Enough of this senseless bickering. You have approached me for a reason, yes? Tell me, what can Jan Goldschmidt do to you? Uh, why do you put up with his insults? Don't you have any pride? I put up with them because they amuse me. The fact that they amuse me infuriates my dear friend Altuk, who in her turn hurls more insults. Goldschmidt raises his soy calf cup in salute. And thus the cycle continues. It's been two years now I've been your customer. Yes, Altuk? Two years of soy calf and strained patience, yet. And I remain happy, and Altug makes money. An ideal business relationship. That all sounds perfectly healthy. Take care, Jan. Goldschmidt gives you a deep nod, his jowls quivering. Until next time, my friend. The man behind the counter looks right past you, and at the dog following close behind. Dante, I'll fetch his water dish. Perhaps a coffee for our friend here. Soy calf, black. The Turk looks disgusted. Very well, a soy calf. He tisks to himself. The man behind the counter has the broad smile and open demeanor of a classic Turkish street vendor. Welcome, honored Efendim. Welcome, and how can Bukagat. Ah, uh, Burakatsi serve you today? You would like a cup of coffee, perhaps? Coffee? As in real coffee, not soy cough? Yes, for individuals of refined taste, I offer genuine bean coffee from my native Turkey. The cafe owner looks you in the eye, the tone of his voice grows low and serious. This is a top shelf item, my friend, and not for the general public. Only for the few discerning connoisseurs who can appreciate it. I think I'm the sort who can appreciate it. Tell me more about the Turkish coffee. It is hand-picked by my family in Turkey, a true delicacy of the sixth world. This was considered a luxury even before the awakening, when the bean coffee was everywhere. Every street corner, they say. But Agatzi leans in close, slurring his voice to a conspiratorial whisper. Long hours in the shop have perfumed his body with commingled scents of coffee, incense, and applewood tobacco. Trust me, if your coffee experience has been limited to soy calf, you must not deny yourself this opportunity. You will see God. Alright, you sell me. How much? This is a speciality de item, delivered at some cost. I cannot part with it for any less than 50 new yen a cup. Alright. I'm guessing that's going to come in useful then. Very good. But Gatsy hands you a ceramic travel cup, which he then fills to a brim with dark steaming liquid. The scent is intoxicating. Is there anything else I can get you? Paul Amsel sends his regards. When he hears Amsel's name, the Turk's voice lowers and his accent becomes less exaggerated. His eyes take on a knowing look. Ah, very good. Please express to Herr Emsel my appreciation of his patronage. And if he needs any more catering jobs, seen to in the future, I am happy to provide. He tells me you're developing the menu for a friend of his now. Herr Winters, I believe. I want to hear all about it. Yes, yes, of course, so wise one. Kami, come in. A young woman bustles in front, of, in from the back room. Her gum chewing is loud enough to hear over the noise of the coffee grinders. But Ragazzi spits something out in rapid fire Turkish. As you wish, Uncle. I'll see to it right away. Kami offers you a sharp grin, snaps her gum, and hurries back into the room she came from. My girl Kami is arranging to make contact with the chef as we speak. This will likely take some time. My chef is a busy man. While we wait, I wonder if you would like. Be so kind as to run a small errand for me. 
It's rightful, really. I hate to bother you. I am embarrassed to even ask. But I would be most appreciative of your help. Sure. Of course, Herber Gatsi. That's no trouble. Altuk's voice flows to nearly a whisper. The errand is simple, hardly worthy of you. I've installed a number of data taps into Berlin's fiber optic network. Part of my civic duty, you understand. These taps, they provide free matrix access for all who live in the Kritz Bazaar. In order to maintain the, uh, how do I say it, the anonymity, each TAPS protocol buffer has to be reset every few days. I simply wish for you to re reach each date TAP and reset it. Simple enough. Yes, yes, simple job. Time's consuming and a bit tedious perhaps, but simple. Just reset the TAPS and come back here when you are finished. There should be three of them scattered around this neighborhood. The first one is just outside. Look for a metal box with yellow arrows painted on top of it. By that time you return, I should have the information here. I'm still requested. Alright, so this one should well and truly be a milk run. There's no way this job can go tits up unless, like, we somehow explode one of the boxes. Here's one. Data Taps protocol buffer is now reset. Let's have a look around. See if we can find another one. Nope. Anything around here? Aha! Number two. I recognize that. This, this graffiti, it's from a band. Ah, oh, fuck, what are they called? They did a song called Bouncer. I think they're like a Norwegian, no, a Danish guy and an English guy. And they make this strange electro music. Actually, it's pretty good. And they've got this uh, character who's computer animated and walks around in all their uh, music videos. And it is definitely this character from what I remember. There we go. Reset the data trap. All three done. As you reset the data trap, you notice that somebody, someone duct taped a small homemade receiver to the system. An earpiece plug dangles from the receiver. Well, let's have a listen. The sound of heavy machinery makes it difficult to hear the words that are being spoken. After a moment, you find you can hear two distinct voices. A nasal woman who speaks like a heavy smoker and a man who speaks in a high-pitched, pe breathy tone. Just heard. Monica. Need to verify. Good for us. A sound like a conveyor belt starts to add to the noise of machinery and you can't make anything else. Until it comes to stop a minute later. Think our next step? Wait. Isn't ready to make a move yet. To be patient. See who steps up. Could be someone more. More conveyor belt starts up. All you can hear is the sound of machinery. Some sort of motorized vehicle starts up, drowning out everything else. The bell rings loudly again and again. It sounds like a telephone. You hear the sound of a door slamming shut, and the noise of machinery is suddenly muffled. There's a rustle of plastic, and the ringing stops. The nasal woman's voice can be heard again in the sing-song tone. Good and dark. How may I help you? Her voice changes, becomes more businesslike. I heard. Silence. Yes, he knows. I told him it wasn't time to make a move yet. More silence. What do you think I am, an idiot? The council needs to meet him again. Silence. I know. Getting everyone in the same room is challenging. Getting them to agree on a course of action is going to be even more challenging. From my perspective, Koi's Bazaar was only stable because of her. If she really is out of the way, well, we'll see, won't we? Silence. Yeah, I know. What can I say? Things go slow in the flux sometimes. You hear the sound of a door opening again, and the cacophony of machinery fills the line. You can't make out anything more. Okay, looks like we have the beginnings of a conspiracy there. More than likely referring to Monica and her recent death, so... Somebody definitely set us into a trap. Well... It would appear that Shadow Run... Run Dragonfall is 
definitely a lot more speech heavy than uh, Shadowrun Returns. Uh, hopefully we'll get a little bit of action coming soon. So myself, Tumnus and Dante can uh, get down to things. For now, I do hope you enjoyed that, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll catch us next time with a spot more Shadowrun Dragonfall. And for that Jabbering Magpie, signing off. Tatty bye for now.